Well, hello everyone. I'm Dr. Stock and this video is for entertainment purposes only. Today, I'm talking my top five altcoins that I think are gonna make the next move in the crypto space. Now, this is not a video necessarily based on long-term outlooks for the cryptos, but ones that I think have some serious promise moving forward, so their fundamental value strong, but they should also have a decent move even if they already have moved decently in the near term. So I'm gonna share some of those with you. Uh, I got, uh, I talked about every one of them before on the channel, but I think now's that time that's getting really interesting. So for me, it's a moment to dollar cost average, looking at these prices that we currently have, thinking of them as things that could move just a little bit more in the near future and also set up a nice opportunity moving forward from there. So starting to, uh, to add on before it gets more expensive, to add on. So that's my take, that's my opinion, and I'm gonna share those with you, but for right now, let's just get ready to rock. Welcome back. If you would, please lock on to that like button, and uh, there we go, press it. There we go. And then also the subscribe button that you have and then the notification bell to see any time that my videos come out. The support that I've gotten from the YouTube community has been absolutely incredible. I like to hear from you guys in the comments, whether it's just to greet me or tell me what you think of the video. Uh, all those things are very welcome. Remember that we stay positive here. So, uh, and people are, are usually pretty good about that moving forward. So uh, I, I don't know why I said moving forward there, but people are uh, usually pretty good about that sort of stuff. So thank you very much. I appreciate that. And I, I the support has been absolutely wonderful and uh, allows me to bring some more support to you guys, whether it's in the, the world of stocks or whether it's in the world of crypto, either way, it's related to helping to move us along with our financial positions, moving on our way to financial freedom, because I know that the last thing that we want to do is feel financially stuck because that that starts to feel oppressive and stifling. I don't want to be there. If you guys want to check out down in the description, the referral links that I have down there for Moomoo, you can sign up to deposit your money, get uh, four free stocks. There you go. Webull, you can sign up to deposit your money, get two free stocks. And then also my Patreon is over there. If you're going to check out my portfolios, my weekly newsletter, my weekly watch list, uh, my private Discord with a growing community that I have over there of uh, absolutely sincere, wonderful, supportive, excited people that uh, are very passionate about finance and also improving their place in life. Um, all that stuff's down in the description. You can go, you can check it out. And I'd absolutely love to see you over there. And thank you for any support that you show. I've talked long enough. Let's move on to the cryptos. All right. So apparently what I have this side is a very, very tiny screen. Let's make that bigger. There we are. So here we're looking at Cardano. This is the first one that I think is going to make another move. Now it has quite an incredible ride recently, taking us up to about that $3 mark. But look at that nice bullish flag move that we have coming out of that, or bullish pennant. I'm sorry, we have a little bit more of a squeeze. It's not so, uh, we have different slopes from the top and the bottom. So they're going to intersect each other. And I think that we're nearing, we are, let me see, today's September the 4th. We're eight days away from the launch, uh, the launch of the Alonzo smart contracts. And uh, they are available on the test net, which, uh, you know, it really did excite the price, brought it up to $3. But I think that we're going to have more of a run up leading up to September the 12th. After that, it's anybody's call if it's going to sell off. Um, I think that there could be some decent profit taking around like 320 325 somewhere around that mark but still to go up another at least eight percent from where it is now i think that's a, a conservative estimate for uh just how much higher this thing could go if we actually base it off of this poll that we have right here it takes us from about two dollars and twenty so that'd be 70 cents that'd be three dollars and sixty cents ish from right about where it's at so that would be that would be incredible to move up that high that's more of a 20 percent jump between now and the alonzo smart contracts so if that by the rumor is going to play out from from now with that test net news that we have with that launch coming up for September the 12th. The more we have confirmation that it actually is going to take place and uh, the more hype that we get around it, I think that this could push us higher from this current price that we have. And you can see the, the uh, tapering volume that we have the, the pressure is increasing on this, and then we keep on holding that hard line of resist. Uh, the bears are holding holding steady, but the bulls are gaining ground on them. And so that could cause us some upward pressure that allows this to play out in the short term for Cardano. I think over the longer term, I think Cardano is going to have... I think it's going to have a lot of uh, institutional buy-in. I think it's going to satisfy the DeFi space very well. And uh, I don't think it's going to be the only choice, but I think it's one of the really good choices that are out there uh, for institutions to make for Cardano, and that's why I continue to be bullish on them. So short-term outlook for this, within the next week or so, maybe a little bit more, we could see a decent move to the upside for Cardano before it settles down again and gives us uh, more of a long-term trajectory moving forward, something that's a little bit more sustainable than what we have now. Now, it has recently put in that all-time high, but like I said, 
the excitement's there. I mean, Ethereum got to go ahead and take its run up to 4,000. Bitcoin got to jump back up to about 50,000. And uh, and Cardano got its run up to $3. But now I think it's it's rested enough. I think it's getting time that it's going to start pushing out up above that $3 mark, especially if we close in on September the 12th. Next one that I have for you is Solana. And I know that this might seem like hype and reaction. And honestly, like, I, you know, I could be wrong about these things. Look at this climb that Solana's made. This is even a, a higher climb than what we had with uh, Cardano uh, in, as far as all-time highs go. So look at this here. I'll zoom out more so you can see more of Solana's history. Uh, it is just way up there above anything that it was before. So we are, I mean, this right here, where was this high at? This high was at 57. So like two and a half times what it was at, we peaked out at 150. Uh, however, look at those trading volumes that we have on Solana. So they were very high when this ramped off. And then there's still lots of conviction in these prices that we have. And I would attribute that to the transactions per second that it has and um, the fact that it works on proof of history, uh, which allows it to, uh, to the people who uh, do the consensus algorithms only have a piece of the uh, of the blockchain at a time. But that uh, those high throughput for transactions per second uh, mean that, well, it takes a whole lot of space in order to save that blockchain because it's just going to be enormous. Uh, and let me see, Arweave, I believe, is the one who uh, is their storage solution for that. So that's decentralized storage. So Arweave should move with Solana. So that's just something to consider moving forward. And I think that there's a lot of organic traffic moving to Solana in the DeFi space. And I think that uh, we're going to see this fill out over time. We're going to see a lot of adoption to it. And uh, as that movement plays out, we should get really bullish action from them over time. They are finally in the top 10 by market cap. They moved up to number seven. As I said yesterday, they've dipped into Doji. They, they've moved up above Dogecoin by market cap. And, uh, and it's been a really quick climb for them. I mean, you can see it for the price here. So that means also a really quick climb by market cap. And in my opinion, they should maybe move up another one or two spots before they really start settling a little bit. Honestly, I think that they should be much closer to where Cardano is or maybe even flipping where Cardano is, you know, within the next couple of weeks to maybe even next couple of months. So we'll see how that plays out for Solana. Now they are fairly decentralized. And I should mention with Arweave that with Arweave, they, because that is the data storage for the blockchain, that is a little bit more centralized than what we had through Solana. So if you think about it by being limited by its, um, least decentralized component than are we could be argued that that is the least decentralized part of it but i think with these trading volumes that we're going to get a little bit of a rest period and then we're going to push upward from there maybe 170 maybe 180 dollars uh, per soul token uh in the near future coming out for solana after that i you know i said yesterday i'm not ready to put my name to that 300 dollars mark for solana but i could believe that it would happen so i'm not saying i think that it will i'm saying that i believe that it could and I hope that you understand that difference of what I'm saying. Uh, I just think that it has enough uh, notoriety. It has enough staying power. It has enough, enough legitimacy that uh, I think it will pull on some adoption in the DeFi space moving forward from where they're at right now. Uh, Polkadot. Polkadot with their uh, parachain auctions that they have and the uh, number of people that are... Um, interested in having a vote on on who gets that next parachain slot this is something that uh has a huge following around it and it's something that continues to push up the, the price of the uh, the dot token that they have for it and uh, i believe that it's a governance token which means that whoever holds that token has voting rights for what uh, the next uh parachain slot uh company is is taking over that place so this is one to really watch out for and you can see this nice little flag formation that we have coming up here from 26 all the way up to we'll say about 33 so another seven dollars maybe this could tickle that 40 tickle tickle that 40 dollar mark sometime in the near future and 40 dollars up from right now is about a 20 percent ish upside from where they're currently trading at for polygon i'm sorry polka dot too many p words so polka dot the next one is polygon and this one is one that i talked about before for a layer two solution for Ethereum and avoiding those high gas fees. Ethereum just yesterday, with all the price excitement that we had, it went deflationary for the full for a full 24 hour period. And this is before proof of stake or sharding or anything like that. Um, based on EIP 1559, the hard fork, the London hard fork that we had back on August the 5th, this is the first full day in less than a month's time that we had um, uh, less ETH issued than what was burned off in that base fee. 
So where does Polygon come into that? Polygon can do the same transactions with pretty much the same security for a fraction of the price. They are sitting right at resistance right now, but should they break over that resistance? And let's zoom in a little bit more so we can see where it currently sits. And this is rather strong because we have it over here uh, and over here. This is actually a really nice cup and handle pattern that we have taking place. And, uh, you know, this could break. This is a, a bullish sign for us moving forward. So looking at uh, looking at this from a technical standpoint, we could see our next leg up in Polygon. We could see that next move to two dollars from where it currently sits. So it's that like 20 to 30 percent ish from about where it's currently at to move us up into that two dollar territory. And, uh, you know, it'd be incredible to watch that happen. And if this does play out, that we actually break through that resistance in this little cup and handle that we have go on there. It takes us up to about like a dollar ninety, maybe up as close to that two dollar mark or something like that. So those are things that I could see in the near future for Polygon uh, because it does have organic traffic going to it. And it is something, especially when those gas fees spike, people move right over there. So uh, keep an eye on Polygon in the near future. We'll watch how that plays out. And, uh, and hopefully we see some price action from it sometime soon. The last one that I have for you is Chainlink. And for Chainlink, there you go. A little bit of cup and handle on this one too. Uh, doesn't really have the same peak over here. It did just pop up to a little bit. The bodies of the candle weren't too close to it. The volume on it is actually pretty okay right now. And if we zoom in a little bit more locally, we actually have a very bullish little flag popping up here. So we could see resistance broken sometime soon for Chainlink as well. And Chainlink is uh, a crypto oracle, which means that it takes real world data and pulls it into the blockchain space. And um, it's one of the... Uh, it's one of the older, more established ones, and it's uh, really proving its name over time. And it has a huge ecosystem of apps that actually use it. And it's in, definitely tied to DeFi, which is one of the biggest case uses that we have right now for institutional money. So um, counting Chainlink in this, I think for the long term, they're a good play. It's one that I already hold in my crypto portfolio. And I think in the near term, we could also see a breakout sometime soon to the upside because we have, like I said, a fairly bullish looking sign between the cup and handle that's playing out here. Uh, and then also this little tiny flag that we have there. Well, let me see, $32. So what would that be like 6% up from where they're at right now? After that, we have room. Let me zoom out a little bit more. Yeah, 32 is actually going to be a fairly good resistance. So 6%, not bad in the crypto space. It might be a little weak. But after that, we really start climbing maybe up to 35 but really we don't get really hard resistance until up to like 43 dollars so this could be not necessarily be one that would be hugely igniting for near-term gains but it'd be one that would give us a steady march onward for somewhat near-term gains like a couple days a couple weeks on this one but i don't think that it's done i think it's going to continue this uh, reversal that it has right near from this from this downtrend and i think that over the longer term for Chainlink, I could see them moving on to that $52 mark to, to retake that all-time high that it has. I think that's going to take a bit more time for that to happen, and I think it's really going to follow a little bit more of what we have going on um, with Ethereum and Bitcoin because I think they're still going to have somewhat of an influence on it. You can see it hasn't influenced Chainlink as strongly as it has influenced some of the others. It hasn't taken off like Cardano and Solana have, but I think that this is one that's going to lag a little bit based on the DeFi news that we get, because if DeFi is using Chainlink, then, then that news when that comes out is going to be the thing that really propels the uh, the token chain or the link token for Chainlink forward from there. All right, so let me summarize. We got Cardano, ADA token. So that one, I think, can break out any point in time. That is an absolutely beautiful chart. Solana, very extended, but yet those volumes... Those volumes make me think that near term, we could keep pushing onward to like 170, 180. Um, if we, if in some incredible way, we were able to break through 180, then we could start. Uh, I think that we would very fine, very softly touch that 200 mark. Uh, 170 would be incredible. Please don't understand. Don't, uh, don't underestimate what I'm saying here. 180 would be um, astronomic. And then, I mean, what do you even say after that? It shouldn't make it up to 200 after the extension uh, that's been put on it so far. It would, it would be, it would be uh, interstellar. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, we'll call it that. Um, so, please be aware that Solana. The only reason I think it has more room to run from right now, to couple reasons. One is its market cap's a little bit low, and I think that really, even though right now for what's on. It is frothy, as I think JP Morgan was talking about it. While these prices are frothy, yes, for, for present value, especially for Solana, still being a little bit smaller, it is frothy when you compare it to Ethereum. However, looking forward from here, the promise that it has and the fundamental values that I have, is it frothy, though? 
that's something that I still want to do more research in to see if we're going to hit that $300 mark for Solana. Because honestly, I'm not seeing a whole lot of reasons why not. And like I said, I'm not ready to put my name to it, but I still haven't found that that thing that makes me doubt that it's going to. Uh, so I'm going to keep looking. Uh, Polkadot, also near-term movement. Polygon, near-term movement. Chainlink, near-term movement. I think we're going to see all five of these march upward. And, um, you know, Cardano and uh, and Solana, ADA and uh, and the Sol tokens. Um, those are ones that I think very near-term can give us some really big moves. The other three, I think, are going to give us some good moves um, over the next few days and maybe as long as like maybe the next few weeks. But I think the next few days, I think are going to be really exciting still for crypto moving forward from here. And uh, don't discount what Ethereum and Bitcoin do in all of this, because if they continue to really press onward, they can have big influences on these altcoins as well. All right. So thank you guys for stopping by. If you do like what I have to say, then please find that like button, tap it the subscribe button, hit it if you haven't already subscribed. Tell your friends about this and help me grow this channel from where it's at. Uh, I really appreciate the support that I've seen. Hit the notification bell to see any time my videos come out. And uh, let me see, what else, what else? Those referral links, nice way to get returns to you uh, just by signing up and doing your, your deposits. Um, so four free stocks of Moomoo, two free stocks of Weeble. And uh, it also gives me, it's a way to, to thank me while thanking yourselves, I guess. It's an everybody wins situation. And then uh, finally, that Patreon referral link that's down there. If you want to interact more with me uh, or see more of what I have to offer, that's also a nice way you can support me while also getting a little bit more exposure yourself. So thank you very much. I really appreciate it. It's been awesome. It's going to continue to be awesome. And I'm really excited about everything that I have um, to bring to you guys, informationally speaking. And uh, moving on from there, I'm Dr. Stock. Thanks for rocking with me. Now go get that money.